a, a red country or red list. Good morning to you. Morning, Nick. Yeah, well, it means that from today, um, you do not now need to go into and indeed pay to go into uh, a quarantine hotel. So uh, you'll be able to uh, do exactly what happens for other people, which is um, take a pre-departure test when you get here, uh, a uh, so-called day two test, uh, which can be taken up to uh, day two. Once you have the result, you can let yourself go from wherever you uh, arrive, wherever you're staying, once you have the result of that day two test. What informed us to put those countries in, on the 26th of November on the list in the first place? Yeah, so these were. this has bought us a bit of time. I just want to be clear about this. Um, and I should say, actually, what I just said about uh, the instructions apply to people who are fully vaccinated as well. Um, what it did was bought us a bit of time. Um, in that time, we managed to get 7 million uh, jabs, the booster jabs, into people's arms. Uh, and by slowing down the flow of Omicron cases from countries where we saw it being um, the, the greatest, uh, at the greatest levels, uh, we, we had that opportunity to do those boosters. However, I mean, it's quite clear Omicron is, is here, it's established, it's, it's transmitting uh, within the country. So there comes a point where there's no point in having a red list of countries and we always said we'd remove it as quickly as possible uh, in order to um, uh, allow uh, those people to, to rejoin up with family and, 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 uh, and get on with things. Well I took a call from someone who finds himself stuck at the Courtyard Marriott Hotel at London Heathrow. By the way they're not actually letting him out yet so I might ask you yeah. um, how he will free himself but he did make this point. The exact figure is 2,285 per capita. For my mental health and for all the stress that's been caused, um, obviously, I'd like some form of redress or some form of reimbursement to the money I've paid. And um, the service here has been absolutely terrible. The food has been absolutely shocking. I had cold toast, cold beans, um, cold eggs, um, cold tomato. And, yeah, it's just absolutely uh, yeah, I wouldn't give that to a dog. That was Craig's breakfast this morning. It does seem a little unfair. He has to bear the full costs for that. What would you say to him? And there are about 100, 200 uh, in that particular hotel at this time. Secretary of State. Uh, look, we've known that travel is going to be different at the moment during coronavirus. And uh, as, as I said, we needed to do um, the, the red list um, because uh, we needed to slow down the seeding of Omicron in uh, this country. So uh, it was therefore a reason. And if this is, if this is uh, that gentleman's last day uh, in um, uh, in a, a quarantine hotel, uh, then, uh, you know, essentially it, it served its, its its purpose over this period of time. So, so if Having you arrive no yesterday, for bad service, if you arrive um, yesterday, you can't check out today. Or you can. Uh, so, so, so um, I should say that uh, Sajid Javid, the health secretary, is going to be saying more about the detail for what happens for people who are uh, in quarantine hotels right now. Well, can uh, they leave in, or can't they? Uh, today, later today. He'll set that out uh, later today. So that's well, it, because they're actually we, run. Why, why can't we know now? Um, so that is run by the health department. So I don't have the, the detail of how that will operate. But, but you he must, will you must know the policy. Today. So, so let's say oh, well, the policy, the halfway policy, halfway very, very straightforward. Well, he's not halfway through. You said it was his last morning. Yeah, so but I, but I, for I, someone who is it. halfway through, because people have been arriving all the way. So someone who's done yeah. five days, can they now check out? Uh, they will. They will. When the health secretary has set out the process. What, so later Sajid Javid has to release each person? Uh, I don't think individually. No, Nick. I think he just well, needs to set out the process for release. So you have to uh, do your full 10 days. Uh, no, he'll he'll set out what happens next. The reason, just just to explain, Nick, uh, let me just explain. Uh, the the regulations for this are set out in law, so the law itself has to be uh, changed, and that is a process which necessarily takes a few hours to uh, complete. Uh, he announced yesterday uh, that we would not be continuing with hotel quarantine. He'll come uh, back today to explain how it uh, ends. Uh, and so don't, you don't, don't know. It's an undue amount of time you, you uh, because know. the health because the health secretary hasn't no, no. set it out yet. No one knows yet. No one knows whether if you're five days in, you can get free today or even another five days of cold. Well, well the, the, the principle, just to be clear on that, the principle will be that people will be able to be released uh, and they'll be able to be released in, in, in your terms early from that. Yeah, uh, quarantine. but wouldn't it but I just idea wanna... for you to know that, Mr. Schatz? Well, as I say, it, like you've got to put in place the uh, regulations. So this is a legal process. Well, you lock them up and he soon said, enough. Well, because we wanted to act immediately. Mm. And yeah, he said that uh, he said in announcing this yesterday, Nick, just just let me complete this point. He said in announcing this yesterday that he'd return today 
uh, and set out the detail of how people are released from the quarantine okay. um, system. As I say, it's run by the Department for Health, and I know that my colleague Sajid Javid right. will be very keen to come back and right. tell people. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's a limited number of people, but quite rightly, they will be keen to leave. But this is actually good news because anyone who is already in the system will have been expecting to be there quite a bit longer and now discover they won't need to and so that's going to be good news. All right um, you, you talked about buying time we heard the Prime Minister just a couple of days ago put the lofty goal of one million boosters a day you'll be aware yesterday it was 513,722 regrettably and I'd love not to put this question to but you're going to come up short aren't you you're not going to get that million a day. Um, I hope I hope you're wrong about that. I don't, uh, I, I, and I don't see why that should be the case. Obviously, it takes some time to to ramp up. The army are involved. I think uh, 750 army personnel. Uh, we've got various different NHS uh, trusts and sites uh, ramping it up. People are switching to seven days a week, 12 hours a day at least. Um, and, of course, people are, are booking. And I, I, I walked past queues yesterday, huge queues mm. of people waiting to get that third jab. We've got it in over 40% of people's arms already. And we're setting this objective um, to have offered everybody by the uh, end of the year. It's a massive Massive ask. I mean, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, I think uh, I think it's it's right that there's a big national effort to try to make it happen. When your colleague Sajid Javid, who you referenced, when he said on Monday that we could be looking at two hundred thousand people a day becoming infected, do you support that figure? Well, with this, this is modelling. Um, so we know at the moment that um, several thousand a day are being infected by Omicron. We know the over, overall figure was 60,000 for COVID cases uh, mm -hmm. yesterday, nearly 60,000. Um, and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the modelling um, shows that wherever you've got actual cases, uh, the overall number of people who are probably infected at any one time uh, is, of course, typically higher than the number who happen to have had a positive uh, test and therefore report it. So I think that that's what the modelling was suggesting. Um, but either way, what we do but, know about Omicron is it spreads very, very quickly this is, this, and it doubles in two or three days. This speaks to the vote last night, or the votes last night, doesn't it, about the fear and the panic that's being engendered, as some of your Conservative colleagues have referenced it. Because if you turn to Sir David Spiegelhalter, who I'm sure you're aware is a leading mm. statistic, statistician, he says the use of those numbers by the Health Secretary was, quotes, naughty and, quotes, not plausible. You are engendering fear, aren't you? Well, look, I, I can easily imagine being here in a, you know, a month's time or something and you saying to me, well, well, Minister, why didn't you guys act sooner? Why didn't you uh, take the obvious steps? Why did you sit on your hands? And, uh, you know, of course, to a certain extent, uh, you, you know, you're always trying to make a judgment about how far and how fast you need to go. And the one thing we know about coronavirus is it's typically better to act sooner. No one, no one wants to curtail freedoms. I mean, absolutely the last thing in the world we well, want to well, do. Certainly luckily, not 99 actually, of your colleagues. Well, and luckily, I was going to say, luckily, uh, this country, if you look at the European countries, this country is, is much more and has been since the 19th of July this year, much more unlocked than our uh, comparative nations in, in, in Europe and beyond. And that's because we did so well with the a vaccine programme, we're doing very well with the booster programme now, we're ahead of everyone else on that as well. And that's given us many more freedoms. Now, we don't want to curtail you, those. Yes, that luck that you referenced, we're very lucky to have a Labour Party that supported the Prime Minister, aren't we? Well, well just be, be clear, if the Labour Party hadn't voted at all, the vote still would have uh, gone through, but uh, at Parliament and each individual MP will have had to look at this, make very difficult decisions, that, that's what governing is uh, all about, and way up you know, where the line should um, should fall. And, and, and some of the measures, in fact, one of the measures went through without um, uh, any vote at all. So Parliament uh, decided on, on some measures to put them through. Other, other places, you're right, um, some colleagues had concerns, and I completely understand that. Yeah. But in the end, when we look back on this, what people will really thank us for is to ensuring that hospitals don't overrun, making sure that um, you know our, our friends and families are are here next Christmas, and uh, and you know it, it, I think it's it. What has it, this done? It's, all, it's always wise to be cautious uh, with coronavirus. I think we've learned that lesson in in the last year or two. What has this done for the authority of the Prime Minister, Mr. Shapps? He has all the clout of a football manager facing relegation now, doesn't he? I don't agree. I mean, I mentioned... The second biggest rebellion huge... ever since the Second World War for a Conservative Prime Minister, only beaten 
by Theresa May over Brexit, the second well, I mean, biggest for, rebellion. For, for, for a start, when you start to compare numbers like that, it becomes a bit mean, meaningless because it depends how many MPs you have in any given parliament. But what I was going to say is in terms of authority, I saw the Prime Minister on Sunday night asking the country to get the uh, the booster jab uh, and yesterday walked past huge queues round the block of people queuing and responding to the Prime Minister's plea. And I think uh, you know his authority in having been the person to get this country, uh, first of all, jabbed ahead of every other major economy in the world, and now booster jabbed ahead of every other country, mm. comes down personally to the authority so not a male of the Prime Minister. Of Theresa May. Well, look, I I, uh, I was in I was in those meetings um, last year when, for example, they uh, came to us with plans for the rollout of the vaccine, and I assume those are the plans that were accepted in other places in the world. And I saw the Prime Minister say, no, actually, I think we can do this better. I think we should do it faster. Please take the plans away, right. look at this again. And because of our Prime Minister's determination, we've ended up being the most vaccinated major country and now the most boosted uh, major country. And I have to say, that takes true leadership. Lastly, um, leadership is being questioned over his role in a party, a Christmas party, albeit done by Zoom last year. Uh, the Daily Mirror now has the quiz team names. Did you take part? Were you in the Professor Quiz Witty team or the Six Musketeers no, I, 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 or Santa's I, I, Ho Ho Ho's? Uh, as, you, as, you, as you know, I was, um, as you'll recall from our conversations last year, more worried about my father who was in hospital and I couldn't see. Do we know which months. team the Prime Minister is in? Pudding Patrol, uh, look, cheeses. I, I thought. Of I thought. I thought that. I, I thought. Look, some of these stories, including the picture we saw this morning, have been um, very, very concerning. And I don't. I absolutely thought that the, those pictures um, of the uh, the mayoral uh, candidates team were absolutely unacceptable. I know four people who are on secondment from the Conservative Party have already been um, disciplined. But I have to say, the Prime Minister thanking staff on a Zoom quiz is really, um, you know, uh, and, and, and saying that that's problematic, I thought it was scraping the barrel a bit. Uh, people have been working incredibly hard this time last year, and for him to jump online and thank them, whatever the quiz name were, I think is, 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 uh, is, is rather ridiculous to make that into a big thing. Grateful for your time as ever. Grant Shapps, thank you. Appearing on LBC, we're at two minutes after eight. News is next. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's Newsroom, COVID passes are now mandatory to get into nightclubs, sports stadiums and other large venues in England. MPs approved the plan last night.